Well, hi there, everybody. I'm Doreen Peterson, President and Founder of American College of Healthcare Sciences. And I thought it would be fun to do um, a presentation on how to use essential oils and other wonderful products in the bath safely. Uh, there's been quite a lot of uh, information out there recently um, in social, me social media channels about um, you know the, the dangers of potentially putting essential oils directly into the bath and then getting into the bath and the oils sit on your skin. And certainly this is something we need to we need to think about. But you know, traditionally that is the way that baths and essential oils have always been used. You run your, run your bath, you drop a few drops, minimal three to four drops in the uh, warm, luxurious bath, give it a good swish around and sink into the water. And you know, a couple of things happen. You're absorbing the essential oils via your skin and certainly the lipids in your skin and your essential oils and water help to you know, really diffuse that uh, essential oil. You are uh, inhaling the essential oil. And remember, inhalation is the fastest way for essential oils to enter your bloodstream. But having said that, if you are a highly sensitive person, for example, if any fragrance are really, you know, gives you a headache, makes you feel kind of sick to your stomach. That is maybe something you don't want to do. And even if you are somebody who is not highly sensitive, but you tend to get irritated skin easily, you really want to think about uh, only using very mild oils that are not going to have any effect on your skin and using some other medium to help the oil uh, in the bath and in certain circumstances provide other therapeutic qualities. So let's take a look today at what we're going to do. We're going to first of all put essential oils with sweet almond oil, we're going to put essential oils with organic aloe vera, we're going to use, and these two are what we know as uh, called dispersants and we'll talk about the, what a dispersant is later. We're going to put essential oils with something called soluble. We're then going to look at um, materials such as Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate. We've got some wonderful dead sea salt here. We've got um, clay, lovely white clay. We've got oatmeal, oats, and we have mustard. And last but not least, uh, we have some hops and valerian. And we're going to talk about using bath, the bath to help you sleep. Now, certainly therapeutic baths have been around a long time. I mean, you've all heard about Cleopatra lying back in the bath with milk and, and rose petals, right? So, um, and that's kind of a fun thing to try, but I always recommend putting your herbs in one of these. Otherwise, you spend the rest of the evening picking petals or leaves or seeds. Um, up out of the bath and usually your hair and, and everywhere else so it's not uh, so much fun afterwards. I have here some hot water. Now remember also that most things are going to dissolve more easily in hot water. You just think about putting salt in cold water or hot water. Same with sugar. You can do this experiment at home. Just try it and it will not dissolve in cold water. It will, however, dissolve easily in hot water. Now obviously you don't want your bath boiling hot, but you want it at least, uh, you know, hot enough to really, you know, get a good steam going. Obviously not uncomfortable. So we're going to put a little hot water in here. We're also going to talk about the fact that oil and water do not mix. I mean, that's basic, right? but um, we're just going to see how well they don't mix, if well is the right word, um, and, and what these uh, other materials can do to assist us in our work. So first of all, we're going to drop some sweet almond oil in this water. And you will see here that in fact it does just pool on the top. We're going to drop, in this instance, I'm going to use just a little rosemary oil. One of my favorite oils, rosemary. Uh, wonderful for memory, um, really good for tired, achy muscles. And remember I said just one to two drops in the bath. Obviously this is volume here is not the same as a bath, but um, we're going to take um, a stirring, or it's actually a little pipette, and we're going to stir that, which is equivalent to me swishing it around. And basically what we have here 
is droplets of oil suspended in in the bath. It's certainly not dispersed. Um, it's not um, any way uh, dissolved. It's just sitting there. So in a large bath, um, you know, if you're using an oil that's not really going to cause any irritation, sensitization on your skin, that probably is not a problem. Um, but as I said, if you're a highly sensitive person, you may not want to use this method. Let's take a look at what aloe vera uh, does in um, hot water. This is aloe vera oil, not gel. Again, we're going to use some just a little bit of water. Not quite the same as a bath, but let's just see. We're just going to pop a little bit of this in there. Again, it pulls on the surface. We're going to use, um, let's see, I think I'll use a little clary sage this time. Uh, another wonderful oil, very good for mood. These long winter seasons, it's good to have a, something uplifting. And we're going to stir this. And again, um, we have droplets of the aloe vera and oh, clary sage, wonderful, um, sitting on top of the water. Um, pretty much the same results. This may have dispersed a little more than sweet almond, but pretty similar results. So again, uh, if you're a highly sensitive person, I would not recommend using this method for putting essential oil and a, a base oil in your bath. The next thing we're going to do is use soluble. Now soluble is an interesting ingredient, uh, interesting substance. It's actually not one substance, it's made from vegetable glycerin, coconut extract, soy lecithin, maltodextrin, acacia gum, vitamin E, vitamin C and rosemary extract. You know, if I was wanting to, for example, wash my hair in the bath, I wouldn't be putting any of this material in the bath anyway. So, um, you know, it just depends how, how you know, clean you want your bath water to feel. Um, but let's just take a look at what this does. Now this is known as a dispersant material. It essentially is going to assist, and I'm using bergamot this time, uh, the essential oil disperse into the water. In other, in other words, a dispersant suspends the oil in the water and it is not going to have quite the same clumping effect on your skin. Of course remember before you get in the bath, if you are using this method, you're really giving it a good swish, you're agitating it and then you're getting in. Now this is really interesting because as, as you can see here it has nicely dispersed in the water, there's no clumping of the oil, there is no, you know, residual, smells great. So again, if you're somebody who has a tendency to skin issues, this might be the way to go. The next thing I want to do is uh, Epsom salts. Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate, are terrific if you, uh, you know, have difficulty relaxing. Magnesium is known as the relaxant mineral. Uh, it's wonderfully uh, absorbent. It, it, it's great if you are, um, you know, really having difficulty sleeping, if you've got sore, achy, tired muscles. So let's try this. Again, we're going to put some hot water. We're going to put some Epsom salts. We're going to give it a stir. We're going to add our essential oil. Actually, maybe I'll use chamomile this time. Chamomile and Epsom salt is one of my favourite. Uh, of course, chamomile wonderfully soothing. So, um, great to use for uh, a performance.
four bed treatment. And then you can spritz your pillow slip with lavender or just uh, pop a little lavender onto a cotton ball and tuck that into your pillow slip is another nice way to go. So you see here, um, the Epsom salts dissolve mostly. Um, actually, the essential oil is barely visible in this mixture. Now, Epsom salts are definitely not a dispersant, but um, they do assist somewhat the uh, the sort of the movement of the essential oil in the water. It definitely has not plumped like it would with. Um, these first two materials. So our next bath addition is going to be dead sea salt. Dead sea salt again is a bit like uh, Epsom salts, very high in minerals, just leaves you feeling your skin feeling very soft, um, great for something um, before bed and you know any of these baths you can also do as a foot bath or a hand bath. You don't have to do a full bath so if you're living in a studio apartment with just a shower, sit on your couch watching your favorite TV show. You can even have, you know, like a Game of Thrones, you know, five series binge and uh, soak your feet. Great thing to do. So you can see here how beautifully these sea salts, um, you know, completely dissolve in the water. And again, you know, you can add a few drops of essential oil into that just to uh, really rev that up. Let's try clay. Now clay is a great thing to put in the bath if you really feel like you need to draw uh, materials from your body. Say you feel, so you know, say you've been like in a city where there's a lot of, you know, like fumes and, and you've, you know, had to drink chlorinated water and you're just feeling, you know, you've been traveling. Um, and, uh, you know, you really feel like you need a good detox. Clay is an interesting thing to put in the bath. What I would recommend here is popping this clay into this little muslin bag, hanging this on your hot tap as your water's running and you, the, you know, the clay, the benefits of the clay come through the, the, uh, the bag and don't leave this uh, mess in your bath. Now we're going to do the same with oats and again with oats I recommend putting them into a, a bag because let me just show you what happens when you put oats directly yes it's just like making porridge and um, of course again you can add essential oils into these things but you know we don't really want to be picking these oats off you know out of our hair out of our, our, our from our body you know um, it just is not comfortable. But it does leave a, a wonderful uh, milky uh, residue that is very softening for your skin. So if you have any irritation, if you have itchiness or you know a little like you know psoriasis, eczema, anything like that, an oats bath is very very soothing and I would highly recommend it with chamomile. The next thing we're going to do is a mustard bath. Now mustard, very interesting botanical, uh, Sinapis nigra is uh, the Latin name for black mustard and very interesting and probably mostly you know it for eating, right? You normally have it with ham, I believe. Um, we're going to try mixing this in water and see what happens. And no, we're not making a salad dressing. Um, so when you put it in your bath, it does dissolve nicely, but again, I like putting it in my muslin bag. But the beauty um, of this straight in your bath, it's incredibly warming. Um, it's known as a ruby facient, and a ruby facient dilates your blood vessels, brings blood to the surface, encourages the flow of blood, brings nutrients to the surface, takes toxins away out through your system and it's incredibly reviving. It's great for aches and pains. Um, it's really a very, very interesting uh, bath, a mustard bath. And I would highly recommend that with the rosemary oil, aches and pains, a great addition. 
the last thing we're going to look at is using a bath um, for restful sleep. Really getting the zen of your bath. I particularly love valerian. I like blending here and I like blending valerian. If I can get the lid open without spilling it, yes. And uh, let me just show you what valerian looks like. Um, it's a root of a herb. It is a very strong aroma and to many people the smell of valerian is overpowering so it might be something um, that you want to check out first. I find it particularly soothing. It creates a wonderful uh, bath mixture. I like to mix it with hops which is also a great sedative and then I usually, um, well I always put it in a muslin bag and I drop directly on top of the herb mixture some lavender and chamomile and then hang that under my uh, running running water. Now remember also you can mix and match if you want to add like oats and Epsom salt and some valerian and hops, pop them in your bag, drop your essential oils over the top, hang that underneath the water, let it run, uh, let, it, let your bath fill and you can even pop the bag when you've filled the bath into the bath itself and use it to wash your body. So I hope this little video has helped you understand that bathing with essential oils is not the scary dangerous thing you uh, might think it is. Um, that as long as you follow a few simple safety guidelines uh, and unless you're a really hypersensitive person it is a wonderful way to uh, use your essential oils particularly if you use the addition of some simple ingredients that are probably already in your kitchen and a few herbs um, that you can uh, purchase. Thanks everybody!